So the first thing we want to discuss when talking about rigid body objects is how all the different components and objects fit together uh, to actually create the rigid body simulation. So you can see by this diagram, what we essentially have is rigid body objects defined as well as constraints and forces in our scene. Now all three of these objects are evaluated by dynamics operator. So this dynamics operator essentially looks at the actual initial state of the object, which means its initial position and velocity at the start of the simulation, inertial properties uh, such as mass and density, and rigid body, body properties, which basically define uh, whether it's an active or passive rigid body. And we'll get more into uh, what active and passive means in a second, uh, as well as collision settings. So all these uh, inputs are pulled into the dynamics operator uh, for that specific time step. And these time steps are basically user-defined periods where the actual simulation is being um, evaluated. So basically sampling options for the actual simulation. So the dynamics operator will compute the new uh, position and velocity for the rigid body object and output that for the next time step. So at the next time step, the rigid body object and the constraints and forces will all get reevaluated again by the dynamics operator and so on and so on as we go through the simulation in time and evaluate it for each time step. Now it's important to note that this uh, simulation is being computed um, in the context of an environment. So you always have this notion of the current environment and the environment is basically uh, a series of groups and operators that work together to create the rigid body simulation. And you can have multiple environments within the same scene, but multiple environments do not interact with one another. To have objects interact with one another, they must be within the same environment. So let's just switch over to XSI here and take a look. So you can see in Explorer, we can uh, set our filter to environment. We can also look at the current environment. And you can really think of the current environment similar to how the current pass works. It's basically the active environment that when you create new uh, rigid body objects or constraints or forces, um, it's that environment that the objects get added to. So to set an environment as the current environment, we can right click and choose the set as current environment option. We can create new environments by uh, going create rigid body environment. And we'll just make the original one the uh, current environment again. So if we actually look at the structure of the environment, you can see we have these series of three connection groups, rigid bodies, constraints, and forces. So as I select objects and make them rigid body objects, so I'm going to make the dice an active rigid body object, you see it's getting added to my rigid body uh, group. We'll make the floor here a passive rigid body object. That gets added to the group as well. Now if we add constraints, so by selecting two rigid body objects and applying, say, a fixed constraint to them, we have the constraint added to our constraint group. And the same thing applies to forces. If I apply gravity, the gravity force gets added into the forces group. Now when you merge scenes that contain each contain their own environments, uh, when you merge them together, you'll get distinct environments for each scene. Um, what you can do to move objects from one environment to the other is simply use drag and drop to move objects into the respective groups. We also have uh, a simulation time control option here and this basically specifies uh, the actual duration of the actual simulation. So we can uh, sync that to the actual timeline or do a user defined uh, uh, basic duration here. Um, the other thing is we have the caching mode we can set here. So we can choose between a standard and live caching mode. And we have the option of generating that cache and storing it to the mixer uh, to be uh, basically instantiated and uh, edited on the mixer level. We also have this operator folder. And this basically contains the dynamics operator. So if we actually inspect the operator, uh, here you can see where we actually control the time step so how the actual simulation, uh, the duration of the simulation is evaluated uh, per frame. So here we have a sub-step of four. That means that there's four sub-steps per frame. So each sample is occurring within a quarter of a frame. And we also have adaptive collisions. And this basically uh, allows you to adaptively sample the collisions.
So that's a quick overview of the actual uh, UI for the environment and the conceptual uh, kind of overview of how it works. Uh, let's step into a production example now.